Take a look at the demonstration that's coming up next. It only lasts for around 30 seconds and then we can take a look at how it's created. To create this simple cutout lettering you've just seen, we need to open the image up into Photoshop. Now from within the PTE AV Studio, we should be able to do that by selecting the image we want to edit and hitting Ctrl W. If when you hit Ctrl W your image doesn't open up in the editor of your choice, go to your settings at the top left of the screen choose preferences and choose system. There you have the opportunity to change or set the graphical editor, the editor you prefer to use for video and also audio if you require it. So if for example I wanted to set Photoshop as my graphical editor I click the button. Mine already opens up correctly but I'll follow through just in case yours don't. I'll tick the box and navigate to Photoshop. That will be found on the C drive, in Program Files, in Adobe, in my latest version which is Photoshop 2020 and there's the icon I need to select. Click OK, OK, OK there first of course and OK and now we're set. All I've got to do is hit Ctrl W and this image will open up directly into the main window of Photoshop. With the image open in Photoshop I'm going to go to my Type Text Tool. I'm going to select the Horizontal Type Tool and click into the picture and type the words I want to use. Now you'll notice that the cursor is flashing. As I move my cursor away you can see it changes from the Type Text Tool to the Move Tool. Photoshop knows that the next thing we may want to do is to move the text. Quite clever, but I'll get the size right first. Now I can highlight the text and I can go up to the options here and choose one of these presets. If I want text which is larger than 72 point, I can type the value in here. But there's another way to do this. If I just commit my text, by clicking that little tick on the options bar, I can use my transform tool. Now Control T is the nice way to bring that up. Now if I hold my shift key as I drag a toggle, I can make my text as big or as small as I want, but the width and the height remain in register. And I had my text in my demo somewhere around here, so I will put it more or less in the same place. And when I'm happy with that, the little tick up at the top right will secure that text. If we go over to the layers window on the right hand side, one of the things we have to do is to remove this lock. Because what we're going to do is cut a hole in the background layer in the shape of our text, but we can't do that as effectively as we want to until we remove the lock, and that's a simple method of clicking the padlock. But I also want to go back and select this text as a selection and here's a nice easy way to do that. Hold your control key and click the text layer. If you look over at the word sunset you'll see we've got a nice selection around the edge. Now if I turn off my sunset text there you can see the selection and with the background layer which is now called layer naught selected if I hit control X I've just cut a hole in my image. I'm going to go down to the bottom right corner of my layers palette here. I'm going to create a new blank layer. I'm going to drag that layer to the bottom of the stack because what I'd like to do here is just flood that with white so we can see the text a bit more clearly or we can see the white through the hole in the layer above. 
Now white is my foreground colour. We can use the paint bucket tool which we'll find grouped with the gradient tool on the left hand side of the Photoshop screen. But here's a shortcut key which you'll put to good use. Alt Backspace will always flood your foreground colour. Control Backspace will always flood your background colour, whatever you've got selected in that colour picker. They're well worth remembering. Now we can create that cutout effect by selecting our cutout layer or layer naught. Go down to the bottom of the layers palette, click effects and choose drop shadow. And there we have it. It's come up with a setting of 8 in the distance, 10 in the size and with an opacity of 58. Of course you've got the option here to be able to change this if you want to beef up that shadow a little bit, make it a bit stronger, there you have the opportunity to do just that. That's going to be more of a personal choice. Now, talking about choices, we have one or two now. We can merge these two layers together, save them into our dedicated project folder where we're making our slideshow from, and we've got our title created. But what we're doing there is we're locking in a white background. No problem, because if you save this lot as a Photoshop file, you can always pop back in and make some changes to the color of that background, should you find the need. But we can also save the cutout with its effects, in our case a drop shadow, without the background. We could create the background in PTE AV Studio and that makes it a little more flexible to change the color of that background should we need to. And flexibility is always pretty good when making audio visual presentations. But if I wanted to save this and retain the transparent nature of the whole which forms our text, then I need to save it as a PNG file. So let's do that next. So let's go way up to the top left of the screen and choose File Save As, as per normal. Now Photoshop has recognized that we're working over on the right hand side there with a Photoshop layered document, so it's inviting us to save it as a Photoshop file. Not a bad idea to do this and drop it into your dedicated project folder where you're working from with the rest of your AV sequence. That way we can always come back and make a change. What you call it is up to you. I generally put something like title layers and I can pick it out pretty easy. So maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to save it as a Photoshop file to start with, but then we can go back and save as. This time, using the save as type options, we can choose PNG file. And I will just now call this title, because that's what this layer is going to produce. Saving it into my sunset cutout folder. I'm using medium file size, medium saving. Click OK. And now we can go into PTE AV Studio everything we need is going to be there to produce that opening text demo. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the text doesn't look quite the same as it did in Photoshop a few moments ago. Don't worry about that, that's just the way PTE shows this to us. What we're going to do is to double click to bring that down to the slide list and then I'll double click the original once again. So we've got a quick and easy way to have the first image appear on screen, then our title, then the title fades out, and we're on the way with the rest of our sequence. So going back to our text and into the objects and animation screen. What I'd like to do here is to remove the selection of this image. I can do that by clicking into the gray area here. Because what I'd like to do is to add a color to form a background behind the word sunset. Then we'll see that shadow show up again, which we created in Photoshop. So up to the top left of PTE AV Studio, and I want this option, and I'm gonna to go to the properties, choose a solid color, 
and the solid color I want to start with is white but of course my rectangle is sitting on top of my title so I need to change the order I can right click and I can change the order here but you can see there's some nice useful keyboard shortcuts here control page up control page down so if I highlight rectangle one hit control page down there's our text now that is exactly the same as the demonstration that I put together right at the start but of course we've got a quick and easy way now to select the color of that rectangle I could pick up my eyedropper tool and drag it onto the surface if I wanted to pick a color from within the picture so if I wanted a sort of a warmer color than white then I can select that you can see we've got a little bit of versatility here but really that is all there is to it if we go to the top right and close down the objects and animation screen we can go into the timeline and all we would need to do now is to organize these in a way which is appealing on the eye so I may reduce the transition of my blank I'll give it a couple of seconds before the first image appears a couple of seconds to enjoy that then I'm going to leave the standard transition of two seconds for the text to fade on screen I'll allow it just a few seconds to be viewed then we would fade off and into the next image in our sequence now as you can see here I brought you back into the main window of Photoshop there are one or two other options we may want to explore I just quickly applied here a simple drop shadow to create the effect but if I double click the effects just below my thumbnail they'll open up on screen and we'll find there are many others that we can choose from this is going to be purely personal we're all going to choose something different but one you may want to try is a thin stroked line if I tick the stroke box you can see a thin line appears around the outer edge and it just seems to add a little bit of definition to the word if I want to change that I can click alongside that little tick box and then all of the options for that stroke line appear on the right hand side and I can see I'm using one pixel here it's being placed on the outside of my text and the blend mode is normal I could choose to place it on the inside doesn't make a great deal of difference here but it would do if I increase the size I could increase it to three pixels but I think maybe it's getting just a wee bit heavy and that one pixel that appeared when I first selected it didn't look too bad at all but there's many more options there so using Photoshop we do have the ability to be able to create quick and simple text effects which just add something a little different to our slideshows and of course I'm sure you can see the possibility here of the changing of that background color from white to something else as we've demonstrated but we could also add textures too or even another image or in fact a video If you've been watching this video on YouTube, can I encourage you to subscribe to my channel? And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be informed whenever I put up new content. I'll see you next time.